So I made a part one video about CVRS and the bug that it's based on, sort of in general, and you should watch that before this one. Uh, I also made like a part two video about more detail and the ways you might fix this, but you don't have to actually watch that. This is sort of just like a second, a second part two, just going in a, a different direction. So this is part one plus I about the specific way that you implement transmute using the exploit from before. Now, what is transmute? Well, if we head over to the foremost resource on the dark arts of unsafe rust, we will find that it says transmute is really, truly the most horribly unsafe thing you can do in Rust. The guardrails here are dental floss. And yeah, all it does is it takes a value of one type. That's just, you know, in memory somewhere. It's like, it's of another type now. It's, it's just of a different type, right? That integer, it's now a bool. That reference, it's now an integer. You can just do whatever you want. Um, yeah, and create all kinds of totally illegal states. And it's... T tons of ways to get undefined behavior. It really, really is terrible. Especially because, you know, with optimizations and whatnot, the, the compiler can, like, lay out things differently um, and do all kinds of crazy stuff. So it really is a really, really unsafe function, and we're going to go ahead and implement it in 100% safe rest. So this is, you know, hopefully this looks familiar if you watched the first video. Um, this is just the same exploit from before. This is our soundness hole. The only thing that's a little bit different is it now works with mutable references. So this is a mutable reference to T and a mutable reference to B. It doesn't materially change how it works, um, but we will need it to, to work with mutable borrows for this. So we got to do this. And that's a spoiler. I'll cut that out. Okay. So first thing we need to do is come up with a plan, right? Because we have some value here, which is of type S. And what we're going to try and do is we basically need to get a reference to it. Where that reference, um, you know, maybe it's deeply nested and has all kinds of other random stuff. But you know, in the very inside, this is going to be a reference of type T. So that that's really like what we're what we're trying to get. So how do we do that? Well, we rely on Rust's enums. And so an enum in Rust is going to look something like this. So we'll say enum my option for any type T is going to have two different variants. And so we'll start with the sum variant, which you can have sum of any type T, or you can have none. And so, you know, as an example, if I were to, we're talking about like my options of integers, I could have some 87 or some eight or some negative, you know, 44, whatever you want. Um, you could have some of any type T, which in this case means some of any integer, or you could have none, right? So it just means, you know, either of these are possible. My option, none. Yeah, uh, this is built in to Rust, this particular enum, where it's, as you might've guessed, just called option. And so, yeah, this is like, you can have some of whatever type the option is or none. And this is sort of the, the Rust version of like nulls, uh, except you have to be explicit about it. You have to tell the compiler, you know, this could be none. All right, but we're not gonna bother with that quite yet. We will, we will soon. We're gonna create our own enum, which is gonna look like this. We'll call it sneaky. Um, we're gonna have two types, S and T. And we're gonna have a from variant which houses S and a two variant, which holds a two. And so how are we gonna, we're gonna use this? Are we gonna use this? Well, what we'll do is we'll start by creating a sneaky enum. Here's our sneaky enum, which will hold a T. So we'll start with it holding the T variant. So holding a T. And we'll get two references. So we'll get sort of like an outer reference to the sneaky enum and an inner reference, which is going to be a reference to take, you know, to eventually blah, blah, blah. Eventually we'll get to a value of type T. In this case, it's just literally uh, a mutable reference to T, but we're going we're gonna to add some stuff later. So what do we do now? Well, the first thing we need to do 
is extend this lifetime. So we're going to, you know, apply the soundness hold hack thing to make this lifetime last longer than it should. And then we're going to modify our sneaky enum. So we're going to take it over here and we're going to have it, you know, instead of holding values of type S, a value of type S, now it's going to hold a value of type T. We're just changing what's inside of it. But, you know, normally this, this reference would be invalidated by that point. We wouldn't, you know, be able to have it here, but because we've extended it and made it last longer than it should, it's still going to be there. And so we're going to have our, our final result here. So that's sort of the, the general plan. The immediate problem that we have to face, though, is, you know, we can say, let mute sneaky equals sneaky uh, two. Like, we need some value of type t to go here. We can maybe say, um, give it the types. All right. But, like, we, we need a value of type t for starters, you know, when we could reference to it. But, but we don't have one. So what we're going to do is use the option type that we just talked about. So what we'll have here is we'll start with an option T, which is none. And because, you know, we're storing options, we can just have a none. And we, we know that'll work. Over here, we'll need to do the same thing and have it be an option S. Why do we need to, to keep these the same? Well, because we're, we're reinterpreting one of, as the other. So we sort of need them to be, to be laid out the same. Whoops. This is not none. This is going to be sum and then our input. All right. So now we can just go ahead and implement that here. These are options. And we'll start with none. And then we'll create that outer reference that I was talking about that we're going to use to access it. So we'll say let outer equals ambient sneaky. All right. So that's that. Now, we need to create this inner reference over here. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to say let inner equals, and then we're going to do a match statement over sneaky. So this is how you like handle the different enum cases separately. So we'll say, uh, we're not sorry, not match over sneaky, match over outer, because we want to you know get a reference. If outer is pointing to a two type, right? We have sneaky two, you know, something. Then we just want that something, right? We want to get what's inside of it. Okay, we want a reference to what's inside the enum. In the event that it's pointing to a from some something, we know that will never happen, right? Because we just declared it to be of a, the two variant. So we'll just tell the compiler that this is unreachable. All right, so now we have our outer reference, we have our inner reference. Now we need to extend the lifetime of the inner reference. So we'll say let inner equals extend mute inner. So there we go. Expand mute. Um, yep, so now we have our you know inner reference, which is going to last too long. So it's time for the next stage, which is where we put s inside. So we're switching it out. We're saying inside outer, we're now going to have sneaky from uh, some input. All right, but at this point, some of you might have noticed a problem. There, there, there in fact is a problem, which is, problem is that let's say I have, I'm, I'm trying to transmute between yeah, just to give an example, we'll say an I30, I take I have a pointer, so we'll have some you know, pointer to whatever. And we this is restoring it an option. All right. And let's say I'm trying to transmute it to, so on the, on the other side, I want to convert it to an integer. These types are actually not the same size even though, or I guess this should be S64, we'll say we're on a 64-bit system, you know, whatever. But the point is, U size is just the like native unsigned integer type. So we want to do this transmute, and these are actually not the same size. And the reason why is, in the case of an ampersand bool, you might think 
that we have to first store, you know, whether it's like the sum or not, right? Because we need to know whether it's sum or none. So you would expect it to look something like, you know, is it, whoops, is it sum? That would take one bit. And then you would have, you know, however many bits are necessary for the actual reference itself. And then, you know, it seems like that sure would look the same over here, but it actually doesn't. You know, this would be our u size. And the reason is that the Rust compiler knows that a valid pointer to a pool will never be zero, right? That would be a null pointer. So what it can do is instead of having this extra bit here represent, you know, whether it's sum or not, we can just get rid of that, make it just an ordinary length of the length of an ordinary reference type. And we'll just know that if reference, or we'll say, whoops, if it's zero, we have none, otherwise sum. Right, so suddenly these two things that we're supposed to be converting that are supposed to be the same size are not the same size at all. And there's other ways in which this, this can bite us. You know, if you try to, you shouldn't really be transmuting things of different sizes. But, you know, if you do that, then that causes problems too. So, yeah, this isn't, this isn't great. So how do we do this? How do we solve this? Well, the answer is that no matter what the type is, we put it in a box. And a box is just Rust's way of saying, put it on the heap. It's sort of a, a generic pointer on the heap, just like, you know, in C languages. And now, no matter what, we'll have a box type, which in this case, like, again, box is a pointer type, so Rust knows it can't be zero. So we only need one of them, but you know, the same thing will happen here. If I have a, a box U size, and again, it, it doesn't have to be this like, we're not just trying to make them all satisfied for, for the null value, like optimization. It's also just for having it not totally break. Um, if we try to do things with different sizes. So again, we don't need the sum here because this is just a pointer. So now everything is nicely laid out the same. All right, so we can go ahead and add this final change to our sneaky type. Now we have from sum box input. All right. So now this is this is is properly here. Maybe I can you know reflect the change there, but it doesn't really matter because we're, we're very close to done, right? All we need to do is get the value out of our mutable reference, blah, 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 to T, right? In this case, it's a mutable reference to an option to a box of T. So how do we, how do we get the value out of here, right? You might think that we could just do uh, inner dot unwrap and just get the value out of the option, um, but this doesn't work partly because we need to unbox it. But even now, it's still mad. It cannot move out of inner, which is behind a mutable reference. So if you look at the, the error method here, or the error here, we can see that we're moving inner, but we, we sort of have to borrow. We can't just move inner over here because what's gonna happen is inner is gonna be gone when the function ends. Right, inner is just a, just a normal locally declared variable here. So how, how do we take ownership of inner? Right, right now it's, it's just life, lifetime is maybe from you know, here to here. And we need to have it last longer than that. We need to take ownership of the inner type. And the way we do that is with a kind of confusing function or method called take. So what does take do? Well, it takes the value out of the option. So we get the same option we had before but the original thing is set to none. And it seems like that that's kind of, you know, pointless, but what we have to do is now we are owning take here. So now that take has been moved into like the return position, it'll last as long as the return does. And so it's not gonna get, you know, our, our new version of it, which we've taken out of the option, is gonna last as long as we need it to. It's not gonna, you know, be gotten rid of when we hit the end of the function.
So now that we've taken it, we can do that on wrap. And that's that's it. That's all that's all there is to it. We've enacted our, our evil master plan. And we can go ahead and take a float and say, you know, actually that's an array of bytes. And yeah. We get we get our array of bytes. We can even do exactly what they told us not to in the documentation, which is to not transmute three to bool. Well, We'll just um, have it be a uh, one-bit integer. <laughs> we'll trans transmute our one-bit integer to a bool. Actually, didn't try this before doing it. I guess we probably shouldn't call it array. Um, here we go. I don't know what this will do, but I mean, yeah, true, makes sense. I wonder what eight will do because I it's probably just. I guess we can find out. You know, is it checking the last position or is it just checking if it's zero? False. Okay. Wow. So it's checking the the last bit, right? Because eight is going to be something like you know one zero zero. Here's our right. We have is that even right? One, two, four, eight. Yeah. So it'll it'll look something like this. And if only the zero position is being used to store whether it's true or false, then eight will be zero. And you know something like nine which would be represented in binary like this, will be true. Yeah, so this is actually a great way to, to check whether a uh, uh, number is odd or, or even. I know like NPM had that thing with there's a there's an is odd and an is even package, which um, people, people seem to really like it. It has, you know, tons and tons of, of downloads. <laughs> So there you go. This is my is odd for Rust. Uh, it's kind of an odd one, so so that's where where the name comes from. But yeah, I I did it. Go give it a star or something. Just just don't use it, please. <laughs>